thing was, it was a very good show for the time when it was released in the 1960s. It was a, it garnered a real big fan base, and after the show went off the air, it went into syndication, where a lot of people would still watch Star Trek. Um, like, they would literally watch it whenever it was on. This is a time when we didn't have DVR, VCRs, or any kind of means No of cable TV. television. No, so when it was on, you watched it. Let's get some nourishment, Captain. There was a port up ahead. Yes, there is. It's called Wendy's. Fascinating. This place called Wendy's. It appears to be a red-headed alien for its logo. Perhaps that's what they serve here. Let's hope she's delicious. The food port. Good. Fascinating. The captain appears to be a cheapskate. The captain, I can't get this wallet out of his pocket. I know, I can't get... What's with these Star Trek pants? They're like skin tight. Wouldn't it be funny if it was a three-breasted green alien him and give us our food? That, that would be, be hilarious. hilarious. Jinx! You can't jinx me. <laughs> Perhaps it is taking longer to cook Wendy than we thought. I hope it's a lean cut of Wendy. I'm curious. I wonder if they heard them. Are they heard it or are they bred in captivity? And is the red hair natural? It boggles my Vulcan mind. Thank you very much. While having 15 tribbles attached to you looks cool. It's not a practical way to travel in a car. Wendy tastes good. We would appear I've got a large slice of Wendy. Tastes like chicken. Mm-hmm. Ahead for factor one. Off to Super Mega Fest in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Engage! Framingham. Yep, Framingham, Massachusetts. This is where we get Sulu to navigate. After the show kind of went off the air, really kind of started a huge loyal fan base of people who really watched the show in syndication. And that actually started the idea of making Star Trek a little bit different. So that's where you get Star Trek the Animated Series that came out in the mid-70s, I think about 74, 75. But that aired for about a season and a half. I think they have 26 episodes of that show. They have tribbles in them too. Mm -hmm gave a strong resurgence to the Star Trek fans, which brought forth Star Trek The, the Next, Next Generation. Generation. Well, I think the other thing, too, we're going to mention is the movies that came out before The, the Next Generation. Because you had Star Trek The Motion Picture, and that was actually, they were planning on doing another TV series, but then after Star Wars came out, they said, hey, we got a built-in audience, let's make a movie, and we'll make much more money. And The Motion Picture was released in 1979. Now I was going to answer my question. I was going to say that the first Star Trek movie came out two years after Star Wars. Yes. The first Star Trek movie was not very good. No. Yeah, there was a lot of change in the, in the motion pictures. Like the Enterprise. The Enterprise looked a little different, and it looks it, that wasn't the big issue. The big issue primarily was uh, the uniforms, and the movie itself was very long. They could have probably got 45 minutes out of the movie. Then they made the Wrath of Khan that has Ricardo Montalban, mm -hmm. who played Khan in the episode Space Sea. It starts off with them finding Khan. <clears throat> Khan takes over the USS Reliant and captures Chekhov, and then he starts. He goes after Kirk. It actually kind of spawned a, a trilogy within the series. There was Star Trek II, then there was Star Trek III: Search for Spock, and then there was Star Trek IV: The Voyage Home. Which almost, those three movies kind of bookend each other. In the second one, Spock dies, and the third one, they go to the Genesis planet to get him. And then after they get him, they have to go back home to Earth, but then the Earth is attacked by this alien probe that is not too happy that all the um, humpback whales have been killed off on the planet. So it's kind of like a trilogy within a trilogy. I never I got the whales. Yeah. Around about the time of Star Trek IV, that's when Star Trek Next Generation comes back. And at the time, there was sort of a trend to bring back old TV shows to try to see what we could do with that. Now, I have, this is where I started to have questions. Captain Picard, Patrick Stewart, he was the captain. Mm -hmm. Who is the guy who has a beard sometimes and doesn't have a beard with the, with the brown hair? Jonathan Frakes. Okay, yes, I know the name now. You and said. He's, he's Commander William Riker, First Officer. So, what's his position on the ship? He's First Officer. Okay. 
You know, he's like the guy. I've seen many, oh, many clips. Many clips I've seen. He seems to be taking over Picard's uh, stepping on his feet there. Well, they do have those spats and they do have little arguments, but they're in, they're very well. They're not, he's not commanding all. No, you can be both. You can Captain Kirk, you can Patrick. Stewart. Yeah, I know. Anyway, carry on. They had Beverly. They had the doctor, Beverly Crusher, and her son. So they had a female doctor. This time. They had a female doctor this time. They had LeVar Burton playing Jordy LaForge, who was the ship's helmsman. And his character was blind. You had uh, Brent Spiner who played. Oh, Jordan. he's the one that had like that radiator. Um, yeah, he had the radiator over thing on his face. Uh, then you had uh, Brent Spiner who played uh, Commander uh, Data. Who was the uh, android who uh, was created. He was cool. No, he was kind of like the uh, Spock of the group. He was the Spock of the group. Now, wasn't there a Klingon? Yeah, there was a uh, Worf. Worf. How many hundreds of years after the original Star Trek was Next Generation supposed to be? Because it was supposed to be seven years after the original TV show. And as I remember in the part six, in the sixth movie, The Undiscovered Country, there was supposed to be like, peace talks with yeah. all the aliens. All in and um make cookies with the Klingons. That was a big hook of part six, I remember that. Before that was was uh, Star Trek V, directed by William Shatner. That's the other thing about the Star Trek series. I did not know that. That the actors who play the characters also have directed the movies. Jonathan Frakes directed a few of those movies. Yeah, Leonard Nimoy directed a few of the Star Trek I know he movies. directed. Um, William Shatner directed uh, five. But didn't that one stink? Yeah. And at the same time that they they canceled the Next Generation, they went into making the Next Generation movies, and they made four of them, which kind of mirrored the original Star Trek. Basically, yeah. So the fans, had, I can see why fans embraced that. Star Trek Generations was their attempt to kind of bridge the old cast and the new cast with Kirk and Picard. And as they, up. oh god, I remember that. And they, they, it was like. People Malcolm looked McDowell up, was the bad guy. <laughs> people looked on it as like Shatner's like trying to cling to a new thing so badly. You know, yeah, I, I remember that, that that didn't go over well in the press and it was some Star Trek fans. How was that movie? It was okay. <laughs> I mean, it was entertaining. I mean, it was a good transition. The Enterprise D gets destroyed. But then again, the ships don't exactly last very long in those movies. But the other thing about the Star Trek franchise is every even movie is good and every odd movie is bad. Star Trek Motion Picture, not very good. Star Trek 2, very good. Star Trek 3, wasn't really that good. Star Trek 4, very good. You know, Star Trek 5, not very good. Star Trek 6, really good. And then of course, the Generations, which is number seven, didn't do so well. But then of course you have- Imagine being the director of an odd one, you have to be like, oh no. my God, no. Well, J.J. Abrams had to deal with that because he had to do Star Trek Eleven after. Well, it's a reboot. Well, well yeah. yeah. Moving on. Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I'm a little familiar with this because I remember I was really excited about this because the concept sounded great. A space port in deep space. It's kind of like Nobody Castle Blanket. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's exactly like Castle Blanket. And all of a sudden these people start showing up. Like, it's supposed to be like a spaceport in deep space. What the hell? How is the cast of the original Star Trek getting in on this? There was a alien in there called the Ferengi. The Quark. Quark was the bartender. Armin Shermanman. Of course, you've got Commander Benjamin Sisko, played Wasn't by it? Avery Brooks. Wasn't Nana Visser played Kira Norris. Michael Dorn came back to play Worf, continuing the, his character. I knew he was on two shows. 